Hello and welcome to this short video talking through telephony's past, present and future. I'm Warren Free, one of the senior telecom specialists here at TSG. First of all, I'd like to go through just a brief timeline of telephony's history. So telephony itself, being able to talk on the telephone, has been around since the late 1800s. So in 1876, the telephone was invented. In 1877, the first switchboards came about. So the first telephone was literally a cable between two phones uh, to allow somebody to have a conversation. 1877 saw the ability to call different people through managed switchboards, a bit like the picture that you can see on the screen right now. Not an awful lot happened between 1877. Some of the technology that we used got better. We started using digital uh, networks like ISDN. Um, but fundamentally, we still have a switchboard that connects you, albeit now automatic, over traditional copper technology. 2004 saw probably the biggest major change in telephony um, since the late 1800s in the introduction of voice over IP, which allows voice to travel over an internet connection. So after that brief history, let's look at what the present holds. Well, the process is still exactly the same. So we all have traditional telephony services coming into our business unless we've gone down the IP route and we were early adopters. So most businesses are using ISDN2 or ISDN30, which is ultimately a physical telephone line into that public switch telephone network. Um, there are even some businesses still out there using analog telephone lines, a bit like what you would have at home. So we've spoken about the past and the present of telephony, but what does the future hold? Well, importantly, in 2015, OpenReach, which is part of the BT group of companies and run the majority of the UK national fibre and copper network, have announced that they're going to end of life traditional telephony services. So talking ISDN, ISDN 30 and PSTN services. Part of the reason for this will be about how we use technology today in our personal life. So if you think about how you speak to friends, family, etc., you'll use things like your mobile phone, Facebook, WhatsApp, Skype. Most of that is IP based services that don't cost you a penny. You use the services in the cloud to contact family, friends, wherever they are in the world. So with a view to that, OpenReach are looking at moving to a fully IP based system come 2025. Some interesting stats from our partner Gamma show the increase in usage of IP based telephony. Since 2012, we've gone from 1 million lines up to 2.6 million in 2016. That's planned to grow to 4.2 million come 2020. Probably more interesting about this stat is how IP based telephony is being used. So if we look at the, at the columns and we use 2016 as an example, 31% of those are private on premise phone systems, if you like. Then if we look at the orange bar, 48% of that is in public multi-tenant user licenses. So what does that mean? Well, that's talking about hosted telephony in a, in, a pro, in a public cloud where multiple customers share the same infrastructure. But what hosted telephony gives you over your private telephony is things like disaster recovery and mobility, all stuff that comes at a cost when you talk about uh, a private instance phone system. So what does that mean to our organisations? Well, we've got a couple of different options. One, we can upgrade the current systems. Um, problem with that is not all the systems will be upgradable and the upgrades certainly come with a cost associated to them. We can look at replacing our systems. So it may be more cost effective to put in a new phone system. For example, if it's in its late teens, it's certainly worth looking and investing in newer technology to ensure that you get the most out of your investment, but you're also not putting a shiny new lacquer of paint on something that, that's quite old. But what it does give us is the opportunity to completely rethink our voice based strategy. So what do I mean by that? What, what, what we mean is it gives us the ability to think about mobility, staff productivity and the actual experience that the users get when they call into call into the business. But more importantly, we've got to do something before 2025.